Coleopter order or beetles? Beetles have complete metamorphosis, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. And the difference between them and some of the other insects that have complete metamorphosis, their mouth parts are chewing at all stages. And in this case, uh, we have a common ground beetle, which is a beneficial insect, will eat other insects and slugs. They have two pairs of wings, the elytra front pair are thickened and hard. These are the, when you think of a lady beetle, you think of that colorful wing that they have. And then the hind pair are membranous and they fold under the elytra. They have chewing mouth parts. They're predaceous, scavenging, plant feeding, wood boring, leaf mining, leaf chewing, carry on feeding, etc. They can live in aquatic, terrestrial, um, and soil dwelling conditions. So the elm bark beetle, or Dutch elm beetle, the smaller European elm bark beetle, is actually the cause of spreading Dutch elm disease. And there are other elm bark beetles that do spread it, but this is the primary suspect. About an eighth of an inch long, maybe shiny brown or black, the adults larvae or pupae overwinter under the bark. So the adult beetles emerge in the spring around May, leaving these tiny shot holes in the bark. The adults feed on the young bark of elms, occasionally girdling and killing the twigs. After feeding, the adults tunnel into the inner bark of the weakened or recently dead elm trees. They lay their eggs in galleries which are parallel with the grain of the wood. The larvae hatch and feed in the layer under the bark of the tree. The life cycle may be completed in 35 to 40 days. So beetles that emerge from trees that are infected with Dutch elm disease will infect the trees they attack. And so the trick here, if you look at this um, life cycle, is they will carry the spores and fly to healthy trees and then they'll feed in twig crotches and deposit the spores. But they are actually getting a, a signal when a tree has been wounded. So it's really important that if you're going to prune your, your elms, you do not want to do it when these guys are out there because they will be attracted to your trees. And unfortunately, this is what they look like when they've died from Dutch elm disease. So it's really important to avoid injury to trees, especially during spring and summer. As I said, the adult beetles are attracted to the wounds. So if you're going to prune, you want to do it in the winter. Of course, maintaining plant health is always the case. Right plant, right place, etc. You want to remove damaged or infested limbs in the spring before adults emerge. You also want to remove dead or dying trees. They're just going to ser serve as an inoculum. And then remove and destroy bark from freshly cut wood or burn or bury wood. And this is the case uh, when you're thinking about mulching you do not want to mulch your elms with, with other elms that you've cut down, just in case. Flea beetles. There's a lot of different flea be beetles here. I'm going to focus on crucifer, which are going to go for the mustard plant. They're small brown black beetles. They actually jump like fleas. That's why they're called flea beetles. They feed on a lot of different plants mostly in the uh, mustard family and so it's important when you're managing these things there's a lot of weeds in the mustard family so they could be harboring these things so you get small round holes that are eaten in the leaves usually in the, early in the season this is a broccoli leaf we have here they typically feed the larvae feed on the underground portions of the host plants and the adults are on the foliage. So that's the thing about a lot of beetles. They tend to have two stages of feeding, usually in the roots for the larvae and the foliage for the adults. And you can see the damage on seedling plants pretty severely. This is them covering a seed pod of radish. But there's actually an assassin bug there. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a light colored tan thing. That's going to feed on these flea beetles. 
Here's the larva feeding on crucifer roots. So floating row covers may be effective. Uh, tilling can also expose existing flea beetles. You want to make sure the garden and adjacent areas are clear of weeds that may attract the flea beetles. Okay, lady beetles. There are about 400 species of lady beetles in North America. Several species have in, been introduced. They prey both as larvae and adults on soft body insects such as aphids, mites, or scales. And one larva can consume hundreds of prey during its development. So the most common ones you see here are the convergent and the transverse lady beetles. feeding away on these uh, aphids here. So you have this elongated larvae that grows to about quarter inch long. Um, these are convergent, by the way. The eggs are oblong, yellow, and they're laid on, the, on end in groups of, on leaves and stems near aphids so they can go right for it. And you may be starting to see this pretty soon. We had some warm weather, so you may be seeing some of these pupa out there. Um, quite often they're gonna be on the plants that have had aphids. They're just ready to go. Um, the convergent lady beetles have one or two generations per year. Here's the transverse lady beetle and uh, they actually will attack Paracilla. They're specific to Paracilla along with aphids, but they're increasingly rare because uh, things like the seven spot lady beetle is actually out competing the transverse, which is a native to our area. Uh, it is one of the first to arrive in orchards, so it's an early pest manager, and uh, you get one to three generations per year in the Pacific Northwest. Here's the pupa. So this isn't an end-all list of uh, plants that can attract them, but uh, you can see calendula, dill, fava bean, marigolds, Queen Anne's lace, etc. Um, there's many lists here, but uh, this is going to be some great plants you can plant to attract. Okay, rove beetles. These are actually predators. Um, they're very good at predaceous activities. You can see their, their mandibles here. When they're disturbed, they stick up their abdomens in, in the air to act like a scorpion. Here's a picture of that. So you can actually attract them by just keeping some debris in your garden. They can be found under stones and flowers and fungi and decaying vegetation and depending on the species they prey upon aphids, springtails, mites, nematodes, slugs, snails, and maggots and this is a batch of them feeding on a housefly maggot. 